Hello, welcome. It's Hard Lord time. What's up, Bo? Hey, man. How you doing? You're pretty sick, huh? I'm pretty sick, and for I feel like we need to start every episode with like a a little catch up because someone's gonna be like, "Wow, Bo's sick a week for a week now." No, no, no. You this idiot. is the next we recorded day. yesterday, yeah. like two days ago, or whatever. <laughs> So it's the same week. He's still. This is the same sickness, same it's disease. Same, you know what disease. else is sick? <laughs> the sickest. Our guest. Who do we got? A fucking legend, dude. He created a genre. Oh, calm down. <laughs> New England, New England's own Vincent Bennett. Uh, I take no credit for that. But thank uh, you. Co- co-created a genre. I, I was thinking. What the genre? What's the uh, genre? Yeah, what is the genre? It's dope shit, dude. Wild <laughs> shit. Swag. I was thinking um, Swag in the shower, Vincent, as I often shower thoughts. I often think of you in the shower. That's good. Is apart from possibly Andy Williams and maybe Sean Martin, you might be the most toured person who we've ever had on. And one of the most toured individuals like I personally know. You had Scott Vogel on. You'd be touring. He be yeah, but I'm saying okay. So th- oh. there's your right. your company. You know what I mean? Like oh. we've had like Emma. Emma just went to Europe for the first time. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Like we've we've had people on who are like, yeah, I haven't done that yet. And it's weird. It's weird to think about as I'm 40 years old, but I don't feel it, um, and I still don't feel like I've really done a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look at this room behind you and tell me you haven't done a lot. That's a green screen. Cool. Beautiful. <laughs> um, no, I don't. I just don't feel like I've done. Well, you just named like Andy Williams and Scott Vogel and, and and Sean Martin. I feel like those guys are just like I. I'm in the shadow of those guys, you know. And it feels odd to be even lumped into the same category as people like that because I'm just. I don't know. I didn't ever think this was going to be anything. You know, I started. Yeah in grindcore bands and I just was having fun with it all. And I never, I still don't think this is really anything, you know, I don't, this is a, it's a case strain. It's like one of those bands. It's like a a novelty act or whatever. And we have car bomb and nobody gives a shit about anything else. Um, But so when I hear my name uh, in the same category as like people like that, I just, no, (laughs) I don't, you don't don't get to say no. I'm here. I'm here to tell you. Yeah. It's the facts, brother. And speaking of car bomb, yeah, damn, dude, there's an upsurgence in that right now for some reason. I think is stage, there? yeah, stage dive. Jesus like memed about it. Oh God! And um, somebody, somebody, it's on some playlists now. Mm. So we, I, I get like I have like Spotify tracker, and Griffin's like insane with like keeping up on like he searches our band name and Twitter and stuff like that because mm-hmm. he's it's a dark weird. hole and, falling. It, yeah, and uh, he has the Spotify for artists, and he's like screenshotting car bombs. Like it went from just going, it just went straight up for some mm. reason. Maybe a TikTok or something. I maybe. on that. The, That's those what's kids. been going I'll on. I'll tell you, man. my jam is, and it always has been, is uh, fucking hills, dude. <laughs> it's also that the ending of that fucking song is so heavy. So there's an anvil sample right in the yeah. end of that. And I've yeah. always wanted to do it live. I always wanted to have Kevin have like a thing where he hit it and it either a real life anvil that we <laughs> tore with or like even just a sample. And he never wanted to do it. And now we we have in ears and we play to a click, which is the first like this is the first year we've ever done that. Oh, wow. And now huge. we get to we get to use that live play. It plays, you know, to a click. So we're just like and every time I I hear because I, I can't hear it in my ears, but I hear it in a live video. I'm just like. Oh, this is what it's supposed to sound like. Oh, yeah, finally. Sounds yeah. so sick. Yeah. Tracks was, are just kind of the ultimate no, like in that way, yeah, the ultimate no brainer for, for just getting the real live thing. People shit on the laptops or whatever, but I dude, shit on them. I still yeah, shit. Yeah. I hate it. Like, I hate the fact that we use it, but like mm. it's necessary in some situations where like Devin just spent three days on tour and had emergency at home, had to go home. So we had like Robo Devin playing through. You know, we hooked it into a laptop, hooked it into a, an interface, hooked it into his uh, his his uh, his amp, and so the 
keyboard, the keyboard, the computer was actually playing his guitars. Yeah, it's his sample of him yeah. playing, right? But I still hate, I don't like it. You know, I don't, yeah. I, I've yeah. toured with so many, I've toured with so many bands that like, we'll, we will be playing outside in Las Vegas in like July and it'll be a hundred thousand degrees outside and their laptop will just stop working and they'll mm -hmm. just, oh, we can't play anymore. And they'll just get off stage. That's exactly, uh, we played, what was, uh, Vincent, you might know, it was like, um, Kind of a, a right wing fest in New York, like upstate. Who is we? Am I? We both both our bands played this. I I just feel like you might know. Oh, I don't remember if you. I don't think you guys played. Maybe you a, did. A no, right wing think. fest and upstate. It, they New York. they were playing like ads on like the LED screens for like Reagan. The, I'm, I'm running for the Republican Party. Oh. You know what I mean? It was like kind of it. It was like We Care Fest or We Matters Fest. Yeah, I Some, Matter Fest. Maybe I Matters. They do that still in a church. So there you go. Here but, it's like helping trying to make a church. Thing. Yeah. Some band yeah. was was playing, and their their it wasn't even that hot. Their laptop died, and they they it was literally they were having a great set. I don't remember who it was, and they were just like, "All right, well, see ya." Yeah. Man, you can't just pull together a, a something. Once you commit in a certain way, dude, this is, how about this? So I went and saw The Who last night with my mom, and Pete Townsend's like deaf, deaf. Like notoriously, he cannot hear a thing. Zach Starkey was playing a full electronic kit. The stage was silent. Wow. Think about that. So they're all Sounds in ears. Sounds fucking miserable. Right? Like, no. So I'm like, well, I was kind of like staged left and like kind of good seats, but bad seats, you know, not like the PA wasn't that. So you could just hear like, plop, 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 plop. It, dude, yeah. So no cymbal wash, no snare. Oh, it was really, I mean, for a band like that, it doesn't really matter, you know, but for, for like, uh -huh. someone who's, yeah, for someone who's used to like, you know, live stage sound, it was very bizarre. I just can't imagine. And they had fucking technical shit all night too. Wow. A keyboard died in the beginning of Love Rain Over Me. Running the whole show. Laptops, yeah. dude. Pyro and everything. When I said when I said you invented a genre, you know yeah. what I'm talking about, Vincent. I didn't do anything. I think you did. And I and I'm I think there's that. two there's two perspectives here. Like I think it's Acacia Strain kind of brought the the hardcore perspective. Well, Mashuga brought the death metal perspective, mm. and they kind of met in the middle to give uh, all these people jobs. I think that you have probably created more jobs than Amazon at this point, <laughs> for for better or for worse. Uh, and you know, good for you, man. I didn't do a thing. You did it. You did it. <laughs> it's, whether you you agree or not. You wrote the thing, you went dun dun, and then they were like, well, "We're gonna do that now." Mm -hmm. hundred thousand people said that. Mm -hmm. I saw a, I saw a meme recently that was like, uh, "Acacia Strain is Mashuga for people who work at Advance Auto Parts." Damn. And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> well. The thing is that those Advance Auto Parts motherfuckers, they got both on the playlist for sure. Yeah, I don't understand anything. Like I, I know, like I, I try every day to, I have a, I have a, a, a habit of, I find a brand new band every single day, like a new band I have never heard of. I listen to a new band every day. And really, if, if it's, yeah, if it's one thing I enjoy doing is finding new music, but I don't understand my contribution to this at all. And I don't think I ever will. Hmm. It's just like a, I don't think, and, and even from an inside perspective, like I go out and I play shows and I, you know, they're good. They're okay. They're mm -hmm. mid-level shows. As far as like us, we are concerned. We've been a band for 21 years and like, yeah, the shows are okay, but it's not like you, you, you say like you invented a genre and you did this and you did like, if we did that and if it was true, like, wouldn't there be more? Like, I just think like <laughs> we're a mid-level band. We have mid level shows and we do okay like i don't think there's anything special about us i don't think i personally did fucking anything for anyone i just think like we came out uh with 
10 records and they're all pretty good, <laughs> but I don't think we, I don't think we, I don't think we contributed Wow. either way. You know, I, I think it's just like, there's a, there's way more bands out there that did way more than we did at the same, in the same time period as us, I think. Bo, is this our humblest guest ever? Yeah, it's annoying. Bar none, the most humble. I just don't want to own anything because I don't feel I don't want to lie. Like I don't want to be like. I'm yeah, speaking we, to yeah. you objectively, though. I have yeah, no I have outside. no opinion on yeah, it. I'm just yeah. telling you what happened. Uh, right. Historically, like who like who at the same time as you sounded like you. Blood has been shed. In case strange, just a blood has been shed ripoff band. Well, then first there you two, go. There's two records. Are just blood has been shed invented a genre. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we met. Vincent, I think we met clean, like cold on a tour in 2011. You were playing in Latham, New York. Yeah. Something. Latham, in, Latham, New York, you were playing at a, was a drop zone or something like that. It was an airport bar. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's where I saw it. And Pat Kinlan actually booked the show. Pat Kinlan and Justin Loudon actually booked that show. That's Did you get right. paid, Bo? Did you get paid good? Yeah, for sure. Justin. Justin, but Pat, yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah, <never know. laughs> um, and then we did the first, the, probably one of the biggest, um, like learning tours for Harm's Way was A Case of Strain, Terror, Straight from the Path, Harm's Way opening. And I think it was like a five, it was like around this time mm-hmm. of year, 11 years ago. And I, I believe we, we opened, we ordered also because of Justin way too much merch. Like we had like eight full duffel bags of merch because Justin, Justin probably went, well, a case train brings a lot of merch on tour. You need to as well. Yeah. And it was, there was like an insistence of like, you need a shirt that has like words, like (laughs) lyric, 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 you know, for like, for the, the demographic. And we still have them in the practice space. I bet. Oh, I've been there yeah. From, this, yeah. from the same tour. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we if we create anything, it's too much cotton. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, cotton. Dude. Too much All anybody cotton. wanted Women was and the, cotton. the fucking Michael Jordan shirt was the only thing that sold on that whole tour. But um, we we opened that for like five weeks for $100 a night. And that was like, tour. that was that was a tour where Chris wasn't with us. Um. Oh. God, and they yeah, didn't it, ask me. Can you believe that? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. We've talked. That's right. We have talked about this. But it was just like it was a tour where we learned like so much. <laughs> but even at that point, it was like, oh shit, Acacia Strains. Like they've been they've been around. They've been touring. And this was eleven years ago. <laughs> yeah. What was that tour called? We had the goddamn tour. tour. Goddamn. I have that poster on my wall. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. The goddamn tour. And. Uh, we did we did two years in a row headlining over terror and I never want to do it ever again in my life. Like I yeah. hate scary. playing after terror. I hate it. It's like the it's 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 like playing now. I don't want to ever play after Kublacon ever again because it's the same energy. They completely just drain the crowd of any enthusiasm by making them work 110. Yeah. <laughs> percent So then we hit the stage and I'm just like. Sucks. <laughs> Kids are just like I'm gonna go sit. That happened with us on, on Warp Tour away. quite a bit. They would play either right before or while we were finishing our set. You'd watch everyone move to the other stage. We seemed to always kind of a b with each other. Mm. And they were of course on. We we're on the white stage. They're on the red stage. Publicon is is living proof of the grind, man. Yeah. Dude, yes, we've, we've just we've been opening believe. opening K Strain tours for probably ten years now, and I. Bet any amount of money the next time a case train towards the Kubicon is going to be supporting them. Wow. wow. Yeah. Kiss That's cool. Some real Kiss Blue Oyster Cult type. I love them. You know, I, I, I'm, I couldn't be happier. That it's like, it's like some movement. wrestling shit, you know, where it's like the bigger, the bigger name is putting over the newer. Yeah. Name the Ultimate Warriors got to beat Hogan real quick, you know? Yeah. And they'll yeah. now know what it feels like to play after a band that has high energy. Like, yeah, there you I go. guess, <laughs> yeah, they don't know. They don't They're know. always right before. Mm. It forever. And forever. on anything they do, they get yeah. to steal the show. Yeah. yeah. They got the track and it just gets people. 
I want to open for Kubicon now. I'll sure. put it together. I'll make it happen. Put it together. <laughs> I'll, make it happen. <laughs> I'll make it happen. You know, um, what What else? What were some, some highlights of that tour you guys did together? Uh, <sighs> we played in Joliet, and everything went wrong during every band set. Every nice. single band, yeah. Um, I think during Harm's Way, someone got a con- or had a seizure. Yeah, yeah, they got like severely seized, concussed, I believe. Oh, okay. By a person over. that you and I both know. Yep. Um, Do I know? And, and, yeah, you know him too. All right. It was at the, the Friend Forge. Friend of the show. Comedy. It was at the Forge. <laughs> You yeah you played there, quite a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah I played there twice. Times. Yeah, I think during terror the PA the subs like started smoking and lighting up. They lit on fire. Yeah, it's a pro ass venue too. To anybody listening, that's yeah, not it's like, like a, some like I, I saw ghost there. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what happened during Straight from the Path or us. I think during us, what happened during us? No, I think during you there was just a large scale brawl. There was a so fracas. Which was a, for pretty sure. normal thing. You had and the seizure during us. It was the seizure. I don't think okay. anything happened during straight from the path. I just remember, you know, what we've never talked about is slippy oh, floors. I at hate shows. it. Oh my God, dude. It's something that ruins the all, vibe. It ruins the vibe immediately. You, you'll see. It's so fucking funny. Cause how you've seen it a thousand times where someone's like, here's my dude. You know the video, the little gif of the the guy shoveling the snow and he's fall he's falling for like <laughs> he's eleven falling seconds, for like thirty seconds, yeah. That's trying to mosh at the wet floor gig. The damn God's Hate record release shows were like the second shows at this new venue, and the floor was fre- it felt freshly mopped when we played. What? So it's just insane. I understand when it's like snowy out, you know. <laughs> Or like rainy or whatever. I don't understand when it's just like a bright, sunny summer day. If Sorry. I am to claim responsibility for anything, it's claim slippery it. floors. Oh yeah, you that's true. You, he's oh, a water I'm, head. I guy. usually have a case of water on my, I don't know when, when or why it started, but I just think it's fun. And I just dump water onto the crowd. Nice. And people are always, um, and the stage, like the stage, Devin had to get like, <laughs> Devin wraps his pedal board in like a shower curtain now <laughs> because I just destroyed all of his pedal boards. Nice. And um, yeah, I toss water in the crowd. There's a, I think it started because we used to play, we used to do tours that didn't make any sense. Like we opened for IC stars. We opened for, you know, I uh, attack attack. We did tours where we were just like the band that the, kids are just flipping us off the whole time. And I think it started because I just wanted to be like, don't stand in the front row. You know, like mm-hmm. I was just whipping water uh, onto these kids and dumping water on their heads and spitting in the air. And uh, carpeted stages are my favorite thing. Oh, they're they're insane, disgusting, man. but carpeted stages are a life a lifesaver because every once in a while we'll get one of those stages that's just like auditorium floor wood. Yeah. And that's, you're dead. That's like you're the, dead. what's the, the venue in, there's a venue in, Illinois and it's like tiered and a big stage. What is Bloomington? Uh, Pearl room. No, you've, you've, you've uh, taken a couple nasty tumbles. Have you? I fell hard on that. And any festival <laughs> stages are dangerous too. Cause they're, they're, they're that like carbon fiber kind of plasticky stuff. Totally. And that will just, that's done. I I'll put you down. I the played, worst in my opinion, have you ever played a concrete stage? I think I have like a stage that's literal concrete. There's this one in Mesa, Mesa, Arizona. I think it's called the Mesa. Okay. The Nile. No, not the Nile. There's another venue in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, I think I played there and the air conditioning broke. Yeah. When we played. They don't have that in Mesa. They have a carpeted stage at at the Nile. (laughs) But no, there's, there's another, there's a venue that we play there with like at the gates and soul fly. So it's like a bigger venue. But the stage is straight up concrete. It's the most shrill sounding room ever. Mm. And what's brutal about that is like if you if you jump around and move around, which Vincent, I know you do, mm-hmm. nothing fucks me up more. Um, like my knees the next Landing day after just that. Jumping on concrete. Bo. Just zero absorption whatsoever. Bo, can I ask you something? Yeah. Is there a booger you're trying to get in your right nostril? I keep no. seeing you do a thing. What am I doing? You're doing one of these. 
No, no, I'm, get the I'm fidgeting with my mustache. You were with for our amongst friends here. You can get. The I know, but I've been doing that probably for like the last six months. This is what I do when I listen. <laughs> no, I've evil. seen the mustache move. Yeah. This was different. I, you went. I got no bug. I got nothing. Let me see. You want big bow? <laughs> yeah, give me a big bow. Show me the big nose. <laughs> nice work. Uh, Vincent, yeah. you know where we met. Uh, did we meet there? I kind of, I think we had corresponded prior. Mm. Right. You know, I was familiar with you, of course, as a young spin kicker. Also, uh, I was familiar with you. Hey, there uh-huh. you go. So Hello. we met in, was it Sacramento, Sacramento. California? Ace wow. of Spades. Ace of Spades. Oh, Great. yeah. One of two gigs that you guys got to play on that one. Great show. Great show. Great show. True, I, uh, tongues, like, like, tongues did okay on that? Tongues did all right. The Twisting Tongues, according twisting to Veil vale of Maya. Oy. Every day. Um, yeah, we uh, we had just played California Metal Fest. Yes. It started so we there. Were, and that was the actual first day. Right. And then the Ace of Spades. The Ace of Spades. What a gig that was. That, that was a great tour for us. We did two shows and just went home. Shows. <laughs> I guess let's get into that, huh? Yeah. We've right. never, you and I have never talked about it. Never talked about it. Sore, uh, sore memory. We have, yeah. we have different trauma from the same event. Uh, of course. Where your yeah, trauma yeah, lasted really a month. <laughs> and my trauma still is Yours ongoing. Yours is ongoing. Explain yeah, my, the tour. Give okay. us the lineup. So the tour was a co-headlining tour, right? Mm-hmm. Acacia yeah, Strain, was, Veil of Maya. Flip-flop. Upon flip-flop. a Burning Body as direct to the... The co-headliners, mm-hmm. volumes two of five, which is like those are two he- popping ass bands at that time. Yeah, pushing tongues in the bottom slot, handpicked by Mister Bennett. Well, I was I was not going to do the tour unless you guys were on it. See, there you go. And then we did, we, and then we did the tour. And, we <laughs> and then I didn't do the tour. Anymore. Um. You know, and it was, it, I was, we were hoping we, I think this was after that harm's yeah. way terror there, thing. There was a period of time where it was kind of like every fledgling hardcore band was touring with these kinds of bands to like get, cause like terror, terror, for example, are like the prototype of like play all different genres of heavy and just get people yeah. because, mm-hmm. because get you do. And they fucking do, yeah. And um, yeah, it was it was after us, and then I, I remember shortly thereafter, I think Rotting Out, yeah, did did one as well, you know. And, and like, just it was just kind of like that time period. So it must have been two thousand. It was twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Yeah, there you go. That makes Amazing. perfect sense. So and like yours went well, mm-hmm. the gigs were popping, and I remember seeing. It was like, all right, Harm's Way is having a great time on this. Maybe this is something. Because obviously you have reservations. At, this is like the this is the first and only time we ever did anything like that. Yeah. Uh, and it was really only because, you A, you guys were on it. B, because it was you guys being like, we are personally requesting you. Back, back then it was hard to put tours together because if you wanted to do a co-headliner like this, like, both bands wanted to bring the tours they wanted to bring the bands they wanted to bring and as far as like and then after the bands it's all management and booking agents and it's really it's it's really annoying and i don't think people understand like how much outside chit chat that you hear from people that has nothing to do with your band personally dude um it's mostly we, outside chit chatter yeah one thing we've never talked about that I, I i know people don't know about is like why routings are the way that they are like people don't understand you can't a even market t- b I can't market even tell you that. they don't understand like a booking agent being like hey promoter x if you do this tour for this much money then when big band comes through I guarantee them to you. It's all like, a game. They it's don't monopoly. like people don't. So people I, I also don't understand that six months is not a long time. So if like you play Chicago and your next tour is six months down the road, you're not going to play Chicago again because that's too soon. It's way too soon. So you're playing, you know, Milwaukee or 
who knows where, not even the Midwest at all. It's yeah. also here's some real inside baseball that we've literally never once brought up. Mm. Tours that are put together by management teams and booking agents. Yeah. Put their bands that they represent yeah. on them only. It's never. So they can get the fucking cut of the whole tour. They're getting 40%. Yeah. Of every any, brand, any branded tour you see, any tour that's like called like, you know, summer fuck fest or whatever the hell you <laughs> want to call it. Like it's always like going to be a management team putting that together. And if it's like six bands from X record label, well, guess what? It's that record label is owned by that management. And it's like, there's a whole underground of dirt. That's that people don't really see. And we're trying to like get away from it. And mm. And this this tour that we're talking about was like kind of put together by, you know, management company A, management company B, and booking agent A, and like they wanted, blah 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 blah. And I was like, well, I don't want to tour with just like a bunch of bands that sound exactly the same. Like I don't want to tour Gent Band One, Gent Band Two, and Deathcore Band One. Like, can we bring a band on tour with us? And our our booking agent at the time was like, pick a band. And I was like, okay, I want Twitching Tongues. And like at first they were like we're not going for it I, we don't even know what that band is we don't care and i was like well that's fine you can just do the tour with these three bands and we'll just put our own tour together and they're like well no 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 no, no. we want this to work out <laughs> i never heard so, any of this yeah well that's i i got enough phone arguments uh, uh about twitching tongues like it was an insane thing um and i did i did a lot of fighting to get it kind of Cause I didn't want to just tour and no offense to any of the bands involved, but I didn't want to tour with three bands. It's almost sounded not exactly the same, but in the same genre, like what happened to, you know, kind of mixing it up a little bit or inviting bands on tour that you're not necessarily friends with just that you're a fan of. Mm -hmm. And that was like, back then it was super hard to get anything like that because the management and the booking companies had such a stranglehold over everything. And you had to play ball. And if you don't play ball, you're not going to get on tour with, you know, one of their bigger bands. And it was all so like, a, yeah. it was all like, if you do this for us, we'll give you that. And, mm -hmm. and we got kind of, we got kind of, you know, backed into a corner a bunch of times. And that's why you saw us on tour with IC stars and attack attack and doing scream it like you mean it and stuff like that, because we were promised other stuff that never got delivered because uh, mm -hmm. we didn't play ball on those tours. So it was like, you have to just keep playing the game in order to get your band anywhere. And we just decided, you know what, fuck it. We don't care. Um, and this was kind of the beginning of it where we were like, I'm taking Twitch and tongues on this tour. I don't care what you think. Like they're going to get it. Like they're going to get the tour. And if not, we're not going to do it. And <laughs> since then it's been like, I think every headliner and co-headliner we do, we have at least one pick. Like we just did a Chelsea grin, uh, just, it was two, three years ago. Now <laughs> um, we did a tour Chelsea grin and they were headlining. And I was like, we'll do the tour on the, on the basis that we could take left behind, you know, mm -hmm. um, because they took two of their friends bands. So why can't we take one of ours? Like one. we're on the tour too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and, and it, that's what we don't, we don't get, if you notice our last like five tours, it's all case trend headline and case trend headline. Cause we, we don't get these direct support offers anymore because a people think that we're too expensive and B we always want like that one addendum to the tour contract. That's like, we need to take a band that we want to take on a tour. Um, so we don't get, we don't get big, you know, uh, I guess big is relative but we yeah, don't get yeah. those big offers anymore because people know like we are going to ask we're five adults uh i'm 40 everybody else is in their 30s and three people in my band have kids and families so it's like we're gonna ask for what we think we're worth and if we're not if that's not gonna work for you we'll just do a headliner it's not a big deal mm -hmm. um that's and the, so the fact silly. that nobody <laughs> nobody wants to take nobody wants to take a band they they don't think is like marketable uh, such as left behind or twitching tongues. It's just like in that world, they don't see it's, they have a weird veil up. It's a veil of Maya. That's <laughs> it's, they have this veil up that they don't want to pull back and see that there's other bands outside of the world that they are, you know, so encompassed in. Um, and I think, I think twitching tongues was the first band where I was like, we're going to do this. We're not going to do the tour. Um, and then, and, which is so funny to think about. Cause like <laughs> it was a hundred dollar guarantee, you know, mm -hmm. 
That's 20% of the catering budget per night being allocated to a whole band playing. <laughs> like the fact that you had to fight so hard for that is so funny. Yeah, and then I decided I didn't want to tour with you and I crashed the van. In the yeah, that happened twice. So should we get into that? So the whole story. That. Yeah, let's, I don't I'll even start, know what happened, man. I'll start from the beginning. All right. If you want. So we were, it. we were in Europe, right? We were in Europe mm. all of October and most of November. We had just gotten home from Europe and it was Thanksgiving time. So we wanted to be home for Thanksgiving because we just got home from Europe and it was just like, we were exhausted and it was like, okay, you're home, drive to California. And we were like, no, we're going to be home for Thanksgiving. So we had our tour manager, Bruce, who you, we all know and love. Mr. LePage. Shout out Bruce LePage. A friend of the uh, show. He's for sure show, yeah. listening yeah. right now. Bruce, so, is, hey, Bruce. Bruce is the best. I miss Bruce a lot. So Bruce, if you're listening, uh, I miss you. Sorry, my dog is just whining at me. No, so that's I, all right. Happens. I was talking That's to Bruce last night about the who. Huge. huge um, yeah, Bruce. Bruce Ketchup fan, Bruce, too. Mm. It was Bruce Page, our sound man, Chris, who you guys know. Love Chris. And our, our merch guy, Don, who is now doing merch for, um, what's that, Led Zeppelin band? Oh, Greta, Greta Van, Van Fleet. Fleet. Yeah, he's doing merch for them, which is Enemies great. of art, Greta yeah. Van Fleet. <laughs> I mean, they're not great, but he gets paid from it, and it's a huge step from doing merch for the Acacia Strain. Uh, so congratulations. Yeah, shout, out, shout out Don. I just... Yeah, I hate that guy with his feather earring. Oh no, they're terrible. They were um, enemies. But, <laughs> so, so we said, "Hey guys, how would you feel about us staying home for Thanksgiving? Because we just got home. You guys take our van. You drive to California to start Metal Fest and start the tour." And they were like, "Yeah, it's fine. Like we don't." Bruce fucking hates Thanksgiving. Uh, Don hates everything, and Chris doesn't care. So they drove the van across the country and somewhere in Texas. It was thanks. It was Thanksgiving morning or the day after Thanksgiving, one or, one or the other. I got a phone call from Scott Lee, who was our manager at the time. I was like, Bruce got of crashes. They're, they're all okay. It's just the van's broken. I was like, what, dude? I you It's 8 o'clock in the morning. You can't yeah. just hit me with that. So apparently, Bruce, they were running out of gas. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. Like Bruce was freaking out because he couldn't find any gas stations. It was on that stretch of road in I, I-5 that mm-hmm. there's nothing. Um, or 10 or whatever, 10 or whatever. I think, yeah. It's 10, yeah. So, Coco, he's Coco, telling a story. You need to chill. You need to chill. Here, come on and sit down. Go. Uh, <laughs> so, he, he saw a gas station on the other side of the highway. So, he decided to use the no U turn area of the, of the highway and turn around. And someone just came barreling. Oh, T boned him. And flipped the van on its side, and there was gas everywhere. And Don like had his feet in a position in a way where they just got crushed, and it was a nightmare. And I felt horrible because it was my. If I felt like it was my fault because we were all right, like, right. we need to spend Thanksgiving with our families. Right. You peasants, you you yeah. know, you're the help. You go do it. Uh, so I felt horrible, and they were like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Bruce felt worse than anybody, and so Bruce. Don and Chris gathered up all of the things, including the trailer, which was fine, got a box truck from U-Haul and then drove a box truck from U-Haul from Texas after getting into an accident from Texas to California, which is uncomfortable if you've ever sat in the front of a U-Haul truck. Because there's only room for three. Yeah. Like that, Bare, there's barely. really only room for two. two yeah, yeah. Two <laughs> they made it, and we we just we found uh, uh, Nate from Zabalba said he was going to let us rent his van, and this other dude who I don't remember who it was, it was this dude. He Baron? said he was going to let us borrow his yes, he's going to let us borrow his trailer, so we could do the tour. And I was like, cool. Uh, so they met us. They met up with us in California like right as we were go- going on stage at California metal fest, we got all the stuff. We moved it into a new van and trailer. No problem. So this van, uh, nothing bad to say about Nate in my life. I love Nate. Uh, but it was the van straight was this. Yeah. Yeah. It was rough. It was a rough riding van. Uh, but we made it to the, we made it to Sacramento. No problem. Trailer was fine. Whatever. Drove down to wherever we played in Southern Lancaster. California. 
Lancaster, uh, played that show. And then the next, we had to drive to Phoenix and it was far. So we drove overnight. We drove a little while. Bruce drove until he was tired, fell asleep, woke me up and then said, it's your turn to drive. I'm going to go inside, get some snacks, hit the road. So I got gas, hit the road. This van didn't have a gaff, have a gas cap for it either. Oh, sick. Nice. So we get going. I'm driving for about an hour straight is yeah. that. And uh, we get, it's super windy. It's crazy. And I was like, Oh my God. Oh my it's a God. winter tour. It was legit and winter, winter tour. Arizona apparently is very windy. Very. Huh. Windy. So we we're driving and the van is, you know, shimmying because of the wind and I'm trying to keep it straight. This truck blows by us. I start going like the van starts doing this. And Bruce is sitting next to me, shotgun going, don't, don't try and straighten it out. Don't try and straighten it out. Just pull over. Don't hit the brakes. And as he says, don't hit the brakes. I hit the brakes. The trailer, what, which doesn't have brakes, oh. didn't tell us, didn't tell us that trailer doesn't have brakes. The trailer pushes us forward as we're doing this, yeah. pushes forward into the truck, oh. we hit the truck front. Our front goes to the truck side. The truck moving forward flips us over and we flew upside down on the highway for about 100 yards. Oh, my God. And the whole time, as soon as that sound hit, and I'll never forget the the sound. It's like bolts in a blender. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as that sound of the bumper hitting the truck and grinding, I said, I'm, I'm going to die. This is how I die. Yeah. And I just completely came at peace with everything and i was upside down Mm -hmm. and it it smashed and i was like this is it and somehow i we all walked away from it somehow we all and and in the panic like you don't know what's going on yeah so bruce is out of the van already like he fucking bolted. He was like, get out of the fucking van, get anybody. And I was like, I was screaming. I'm okay. Is everybody okay? Is, is everybody okay? So I'm stuck in my seatbelt and I yeah. can't fucking get out. And I was hanging like, or is it, I, I was it hanging it? up. I was hanging upside oh down God. Oh my God. in my seatbelt and I unbuckled it and crawled out Bruce's window. Cause my window was collapse. So like, there was about that much room. My my hair got pulled out because it was dragging along wow. the road. Um, so I crawled out Bruce's window and I was trying to get everybody else out of the van. I was trying to get as far away from the van as possible because there's no gas cap. We just filled up. Yeah, there yeah. was gas pouring all over the fucking place. So Tony, uh, who's playing guitar for us at the time, Jack, our bass player, got out that window through a waterfall gasoline. Chris is in the back seat. And he's, I see him punching the window and he couldn't get out. I was like, use your fucking feet. And he kicked the windows out and everybody, everybody got out of the van that way. So Bruce, I broke down. Like I fucking, I lost it. I was in the desert floor. I was on the desert floor, just like crying, covered in sand, covered in gasoline. Uh, I hadn't realized yet that I shattered both of my knees. Oh my God. Um, And everybody else. Like Tony was covered in gasoline. Bruce dislocated his shoulder um, because it was the one time he wore a seatbelt. He did, he just never, he just like, I don't fucking believe in those things. I think they're stupid. The one time he wore a seatbelt dislocated his shoulder. Um, and then Chris broke but, his hand. But lived. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Chris broke his hand trying to smash the window. Uh, Don like broke his feet even more. And I think Tony dislocated his shoulder as well. And he, Tony had some like, like, like gravel rash to like yeah road road rash well because the the something. roof was off and we were we were grinding on yeah. pavement Unreal. i remember that um my and sweet, my phone my was sweet gone. sweet tony my phone was in the dashboard of the van i couldn't find my phone tony's van landed tony's phone landed directly into a puddle of gasoline in a rumble strip uh-huh. um it was it was a fucking nightmare like there was merch everywhere there was gear everywhere oh and my god so i'm sitting on the ground and the truck driver comes up to me and he's like, are you guys okay? And I was like, yeah, I, I think we're fine. He's like, all right, I'm going to go. And I was like, no, oh you're not. God. Dude, yeah, no. where do you, where? He's like, I got to go. I got to, I got to, uh, 
I got to deliver my shipment. I was like, you can't leave. You're part of this. There's like a bunch of people here that saw it. And of yeah. course, somehow there was like a bunch of EMTs just behind us on the road. Unbelievable. Um, and the truck driver tried to leave. And there was like five people who were like, if you leave, click. I have a picture of your face. I have a picture of your license plate. Like, it's a hit and run. Yeah. It was crazy. P.S. That truck company tried to sue me for ruining, really? for, for ruining one of their trucks. Wow. Yeah. So that's the whole story. Um, Tony, Bruce, Don went to the hospital. I didn't. Uh, we sat with and the your van. knees are shattered. Yeah. I mean, I had glass okay. in, in there. Okay, so, yeah. So when you say your knee, what part of your knee? Like I have bone. I still have bone fragments like in floating around inside of my knee. Like I could walk uh, my knees. Like in are, the in the joint? Yeah. Like in the front. Like when I drive yeah. in shorts, I like feel around and I can feel like the wow. bone. there's a hole. There's a indentation of a hole in my knee <laughs> from that. So everybody, these three dudes go to the hospital. I um, stay with the van because the tow truck's coming in three hours. And uh, everybody's like, cleaning up and the, the van and trailer get loaded onto a tow truck. Literally three hours sitting there for three hours waiting. Um, go to the impound yard. I found my phone somehow. It was in the dashboard, like on behind the the steering wheel because i couldn't contact my family i couldn't oh, contact right. anyone. yeah um so we got the van to an impound yard and there was a hotel across the street my favorite part of the story is i walk across the street to this hotel i'm covered in blood gasoline sand tears i'm fuck i have hair ripped out of my head i'm literally bleeding i walk up to the the counter and the lady's like can i help you <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, that's normal shit. That's a day in life for her. I was like, what happens? What happens? Like we out got here? another one. What Desert happens people. out here that this lady's just like, this is good. You good? This guy needs a room. What do you want? Desert yeah. living. Yeah. And then I took a shower and it was just the dirtiest I've ever been yeah. in my entire life. Prime. Oh my but God. But then we had to go home because we Absolutely. just totaled two vans and I'm sorry, twitching tongues. No, oh, no. But, uh, I don't think that we, there was just no way for us to know that it was that gnarly, you know? Yeah, it was fucked. And then well, the, the honestly, God, the first like clear thought in my head after breaking down was, oh, Nate's going to kick my ass. <laughs> yeah. Like I was, I was like bummed because I just ruined their van and trailer, you know? Right. Um, That's the least of your concerns. Jesus, it was it was up on the top of my list. Hey, if insane. it's any consolation, a couple weeks later, Twitchy Tugs were supposed to stay with me, and I overslept. He blew it, dude. I blew, I, I dropped. That was that tour. I dropped the. But ball. I uh, so what time did that? That was the middle Clearly of the night. Clearly the same experience as we. It was a, it was like seven or eight in the morning. Okay, because we we stayed at our homes peacefully. Yeah, uh, and on the way, uh, read on Lamb Goat. Mm. Acacia Strain drops current headlining tour because they crashed their van. Yeah. And we were halfway to Arizona at like a Carl's Jr. or something thinking about turning around. Yeah. Yeah. Just not doing the tour. Did you make the right decision? Uh, there's, I, there's a handful of people to this day who say they got into hardcore music because of us opening that tour. That's there awesome. One of one person saying that would be enough for me. Right. You know, but the fact that there are several who are like, I saw your set and it changed my life is yeah. insane. So, yeah, I think we made the right call. And, you know, we're talking about it. We, we get paid mm -hmm. to talk about it now. You know? 10 years uh, in a month, I think. Literally 10 years next yeah. month. What's yeah. crazy is on the, the goddamn tour, the mm -hmm. tour that we did, Stray flipped their van. Yeah, that was and Chris and Chris was riding with them. So Chris he's been, he's been through he's been it twice. Three, Chris has been in three van, van flips. Wow. Yep. Jesus Christ. I just I, so I think we, we didn't really spend time together at the Sacramento show just because it was like day one kind of madness type thing. Mm -hmm. But Lancaster, we got to chill a bit, and that was when I met Tony as well, who is like Tony's the best. Oh my god. <laughs> I would do anything for that. Tony's the best. I would. I would do anything. I would do anything. I Tony, Tony, if you're listening, Tony's the best. You got three train, you got three killers for you <laughs> if you need them. Huh? 
through dyers too. Um, yeah, that was a. Uh, it was a it was a one of, that was the only time we experienced bands with laptops like needing their laptops to do it. So every night on that, yeah, Vail Maya didn't even have cabs on stage. Vail Maya had no cabs on stage. They didn't even volumes, fake it. no volumes. One guitar, uh, other one was a laptop. Yeah, and once somebody's shit got fucked up every night, which was the best. You know, that makes me so nervous. Makes me so nervous about nervous. playing with a laptop. No, no, just don't for overcomplicate it. That's what that's what the problem is. Is everybody decides well we can do everything. Like we've toured with bands who literally their their laptop is a member of the band because yeah. they don't play their instruments at all. We've toured with bands on these scream it like you mean it's or whatever, where bands will I will be standing on stage, nothing's plugged in, guitars are not live. The only thing that's live is the drums. And it's which are to a click. Absolutely. Yeah, it will have so, to. Yeah. And triggered. If, if they're playing to and the triggered, if they're yeah. playing to the music yeah. recorded, it's it's insane. And it's insane to me the amount of people who are watching these bands being like, this is my favorite band. Yeah. 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 And this yeah. is their this is the rec- a recording of the album that I'm listening to live. They sound <laughs> just like the record. It's it is the record. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah. I'll never forget on that tour volumes. Like two weeks in, uh, Gus, I, we realized that they were from the valley. Yeah, which oh. we had no idea. And and Gus found out that Taylor and I were in fight everyone, and was like, "What do you mean? Like you don't like that's wait, you like you're just so confused." And then watched our set every night. After we that. we ran across Gus when he was a young boy. He was fourteen. <laughs> Or 15 years old. And remember the whiskey, like how they used to make locals close the show? Like they would have to sell tickets and then the locals would have to play after the headlining bands. Like there'd be one local that opened and one local that closed the show. And that was always insane to me. But Gus was in a band that closed the whiskey at go-go show. And he was, I think he was 14 years old. And I was like, wow, this kid's 14. It's crazy that he's in a band. Fast forward to like, whenever 2000 uh whatever and i was like wow i can't believe this dude's in a band (laughs) Um, and i have i have volumes of volume stories but i just don't want to tell them yeah Yeah. that's fair uh twitch that's for another show covered carnivore on that tour only on the bad sets really so when it was super awkward we closed with suck my dick yeah basically sure did arms way covered cold as life on the tour we did that's also correct. Which yeah. is so funny. It was because you know? Peter, Peter, our, uh, our our merch lad, was a uh, huge Clevo hardcore fan. And we just, like, promised him. What is that? What? <laughs> Clevo hardcore? Wait, wait, wait. Was, oh, it was Cold as Life. I'm sorry. I'm Dude, I'm sorry. Sudafed, I'll find. Sudafed. Yeah, my, my bad, guys. I was on uh, drugs. Doing great. I think Colin, mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. At that, at that show, that Joliet show, you got you said like we got two songs left, and and people like cheered. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, that actually oh. happened. That was one of the gnarliest ones. Twisting That's tons. so brutal. Yeah, and I mean we worked that into the the live album, like, and that That's was right. directly yeah, inspired okay, right. by the Joliet thing. I've um, I've I've definitely heard a a, a band open uh, and then in between like you know the second and third song people say one more song. Yeah, that's the best. Like, I've definitely heard that. But but like voracious applause at yeah. at two at we have two left was definitely like man, we got to get out of here. Uh, did we, I mean did we play suck my dick that night? Yeah, I re- It must have been bad. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz that was that was specifically a thing we did for when the show sucked. I think um, I went there with Andrew I believe Mr. Morrissey Toledo. I remember being really bad, uh, <laughs> but we had, we, we were doing like a secret set at the middle frat or something. Oh, sick. Uh, so like there was a couple hardcore kids there. Slippery floor at that metal slippery frat. floor at the metal frat, but they, ju- they knew I was like, we'll see you guys tomorrow. And they were all like, <laughs> um, <laughs> dude, Richmond on that was unreal. 
for us specifically. I don't know what really? happened. Really? There's just no rhyme or reason. No, they don't. They never fucking make their money. They don't know what they're doing. Mm-mm. It's good, and then it's not, and then it's good, and then it's not. Vincent, let's talk about like summer slaughter tours. Okay. Let's talk about let's talk about a tour you've done that had way too many bands. Huh. I'm just throwing this. I'm playing bingo right now because yeah. I know it. It happens. Uh, way too many bands. Okay. Where like openers starting at like 4 p.m. on a weekday. Okay. You know, with um, like one green room that's just full of <laughs> like, I'm like 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 happy those don't happen anymore. Mm. We did we did one summer slaughter. We did one all stars tour. Mm. And we did scream it like you mean it. And obviously we've done two warp tours, but that's a different, uh, that's a different animal. Um, yeah. But we, I'll never forget. So we did summer slaughter and there was a local on every show that had to play in a battle of bands to gain the permission or the, the honor, I guess, to, mm-hmm. to okay. open their city summer slaughter. So there was always a battle of bands. And the first day was in Denver, Colorado. <laughs> I hate that. I was standing outside and I was talking to this kid came and was like, Oh, I'm in the local band. I really like would be, I thought it would be sick if you guys watch this, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, sure. And he goes, dude, it just dawned on me. This is the first day of tour. Right. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, we're the first band to play the entirety of summer slaughter first band first day this is awesome and i was like not as awesome as you think man but that mm-hmm. always like that his delivery and his flat brim hat like everything made me <laughs> <laughs> everything perfect think storm about of madness in that moment like his monster energy drink jersey like everything <laughs> just makes every time i think about it i just laugh because i'm like yeah yeah, you're sure. perfect. Yes, you, yes, you absolutely are. But so. it was eleven o'clock in the morning. Like we were there. Like load-ins were around ten. Wow. Because there's a.m. Yeah, ten a.m. Absolutely. Ten a.m. Load-in for a summer slaughter tour. You have to get there uh, and bring all your stuff inside, and then we get kicked out of the venue after we bring all our stuff inside because our ten enemy has to sound check, and they don't want anybody inside when they sound check, which was uh, weird. But whatever. So we got to enjoy our day. I, I don't, you know, I, I'm I'm glad those tours are gone, but I'm also I'm 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 reminiscent of them because sure because you get there at not at 10 and then you just hang out all day, you play a 30 minute set and you're done. Like we would get done at you know 3 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon and then just be done. It's a great day. Like half yeah, it's awesome. I can go to bed whenever I want. It's yeah. It was. It's cool, but at the same time, you're like, here's another overnight drive. Like that. That's where we actually got into. Like, fuck hotels. Fuck it all. We're just gonna sleep in the van, and that's that's how we got into that because load in at 10 a.m. The show's over at 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 11 p.m. You. That's a dead drive every night, and the drives were not. The drives were routed for a bus, so it's like. That's an eight hour drive. That's a nine hour drive. You know, eight to drive. eight to fifteen every night. Yeah, it's yeah, not great. We did so that. We, sounds we, Sounds of the Underground was the first one we ever did. It was two thousand seven. We were rotating tiers. Like there was first a tier was Goat Whore and This Is Hell. Second tier was us rotating with Devil Wears Prada, Heavy Heavy Low Low, and Number Twelve Looks Like You. Wow rotating every day so we were there playing third or seventh every day um <laughs> between those third fourth fifth or like six i guess and then third or seventh <laughs> yeah it was well, any any number between any number between that so oh, it was God. that and then it was like dark sour job for cowboy uh and then rotating every time i die shadows fall chimera and then Gwar. whoa Gwar was headliner every because or headlined every day and and be. every once in a while they would intersplice like mushroom head would play six oh. days in Ohio or whatever. And Whoa, you know, um all the remains play a day and testament play a day. And so they kept they were adding bands certain days. So you'd never no, no, no idea when you were supposed to play. And load in was nine o'clock in the morning every day. Oh, and that's where I learned how to sleep in a van in 2007 and not shower. Um, because then there, there was obviously there was 
places there was yeah. places you could go to shower but we were not allowed to use them because we were the second tier band we were not sure we weren't john for a cowboy or amana marth was on it too forgot about that oh um, yeah that's a big one um, but we we did a mini hard lore with you at furnace fest yeah that isn't out yet and probably won't be out for a minute and we talk about the diy-ness of the acacia strain huh but I think we should talk about it here too. Yeah, because yeah. This is it's big, like Big Daddy. I borderline thought you guys were like fucking with me the first time I like found out that you guys just slept in the van. Like I legitimately couldn't believe it. Still still doing it. Still doing it. <laughs> still doing it. Uh is Devin, have- is Devin uh backbench or no, Devin is shotgun. Shotgun. Shotgun sleeper. These new these new vans, like the the transits, they yeah, recline all the way, and apparently yeah. Devin can sleep there. Devin was mattress, like we have a mattress in in the front behind the front seats, mm-hmm. and then three benches. Yeah, so, so the, like, they okay. would have the first bench out. I'm in the back. I've been in the back since I crashed the van. Oh. Uh, I'm not allowed to drive anymore, and nor do I want to. Yeah, right. Um, because I tried to drive again. I had a fucking panic attack and had to pull over on the side of the highway. Um, do you get so, that same anxiety driving at home or is it just no, a van? Like not at all. It's trailer. I think it's with a van with a trailer attached with a bunch of lives. With your boys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so it's me. And then the second bench in front of me used to be Kevin's, but now it rotates out uh, between tour manager, sound guy, merch guy, mm-hmm. and then Griffin. And then Kevin and Mike are on the mattress where it used to be Devin and Tom on the mattress. And I think that's why Tom quit the band. So <laughs> Devin, so Devin sleeps in the front seat now. Okay. Um, and then whoever's driving just kicks it back and sleeps up there too. And Does we that cover it. the mattress? It gets close enough where they can still be comfortable. <laughs> so Devin, this is like, I'm Devin. This is the, Basically, See, yeah. <laughs> I but Devin can, seems like he could sleep fucking anywhere. He does. Yeah. I just can't fathom driving six hours, getting to wherever you're you're parking for the night, and then being like, "All right, good night, guys." And then one of these. You guys are maniacs. A lot of people can't. No, no way. I can't sleep sitting up. Period. Neither can I. That's why I'm in the back. Because oh, first of all, no one wants the back. No, I couldn't do the back too hot, and I'd get too nauseous. And I love the back bench. Really, love it. It's why, awesome. Why? Why do you love it? Uh, when there's a when there's like a vent that works. Yeah, it's just it feels like my little place, solitude. You got a jerry rig event, regardless. Like you take one of the vents, you buy a tube, oh. yeah, um, HVAC tube, and you snake it back there. Like Smart. you have to. I did. But that I with think. My- the plan, oh. the plan now is to build bunks. Like we're going to build bunks for the back that we can be removed and anchored properly. In just a f- regular 15 pass van? Yeah, whatever the, the transits, because we rent. Okay. Uh, we've been through too many vans to own ever again. Sure, sure. And um, well, how, wh- how expensive, what's the price difference at this point than renting a bandwagon? The bandwagons are insane right now are they it's well not only is it price per day uh, yeah i think it's like 650 per day or something it's, yeah it's a lot it's price per day plus you need to hire a driver, driver. you have and to yeah, yeah the drivers now are not fucking clowns like they're like this is what i i have to get sleep every eight hours do you have to pay me my rate all the right. stuff like you like you can hire your friends but mm, i wouldn't yeah and then right. gas and the oh, generators right. running 24 hours a day oh so and those things break like so they're it's in not- the thousands a day for sure. I've also yeah. heard that like bandwagons are not built. They're they're converted. They're not built for what they are. They're converted box trucks. Yeah. Yeah, they're box trucks. So like suspension, brutal. Yeah, you're sleeping on a bump. It's yeah, just like it's, it's not like a bus. You get, where, some of where you get like, launched in the air when you go yeah, over a bump. That's wow. I used like to be that. very like oh man I can't wait to do a. a fucking bandwagon someday and then i heard heard a couple i heard all of this basically and it was like oh yeah. maybe we've done a couple we we've done it a couple times like the tour after uh 
the van flip tour because we were yeah. like, I don't know if we can ever yeah, do this again. How this long again. before you toured again after that? When did we tour? We toured in November. Uh, our next tour was in February or oh March. My God, that's right then. It was ETID though. Like we couldn't say no. Yeah. yeah. Every time I die, us and Vanna and uh, no bragging rights. It was a good tour. Vanna, man. But Bruce loves them, huh? I felt. <laughs> I, what? <laughs> <laughs> Does he? No. Um, no. <laughs> was was that Tony's? What, how long after did Tony leave the band? And that was that was Tony's last tour. Okay. Um, because then we had oh. Richie join. Richie's first day, first tour was every time I die, and I felt insanely dumb because it had always tours in the van. Yeah, yep. so they had a van, and we were in a bandwagon, like direct support bands, you know. But I couldn't step foot in a van; like I couldn't do it. I it mean, that, only- I, I feel like you get a pass for that. Yeah, band. absolutely. Yeah, it was the only way we could do it, and it was still not easy because bandwagons, as as you said, are not they're not great. Like you, any, any turn or bump, it's, you're falling out of your bunk. Like it's no joke in there. Mm. Yeah. It's crazy. out. Yeah. I wow. fell out of my bunk on warp tour in a dream. Did you? Uh, yeah, I did. I was like screaming and I scared the fuck out of Keith. I landed. Dude, like what is wrong with you? <laughs> screaming in your sleep? You're tortured. Yeah. I don't know. What do you want from me? Well, fix it. All right. Um, if you ever need to talk, you know, <laughs> like we only talk about the show now. Yeah. I, so, so your friend, you know, um, question or, or no comment was a lot of bands of this, uh, of like your guys level. Every time I die, uh, we toured with black Dahlia murder mm-hmm. and it was the same thing. They're very DIY. Like, a, man. like 15 passenger van and like everyone sharing one room yeah money sucks like you can't yeah you can't be just throwing everywhere you got to understand like this isn't forever you know you're not going to be in abandoned all ships for the rest of your life (laughs) or whatever you know like you can't just and even that even now 21 years in i'm just like yo would i rather you know hang out in my home and be comfortable and not have to worry about fuck like what the fuck am i gonna do mm-hmm. i shouldn't have got that bus you know like yeah, yeah. i would rather just sleep on a bench and be homeless for a month than be comfortable for a month and then just be homeless in real life you know I, it's 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 a give and take and we don't it's not like we're making 10 grand a show you know like we're still mm-hmm. not making a 10 grand a show <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. like it's like we could take that money and use it, you know, when we're home or we could take it, we could use it right now and just look at us. We're in a bus, you know, it's, it doesn't feel every dollar you spend is a dollar out of your own pocket. It doesn't feel right. And even now, like we get out of the van, Mike, our new guitar player, Mike jokes, like every time he steps out of the van, he spends $20 just because you stop at a flying J you're like, well, beef jerky. Great. Yeah. His hat 20 bucks. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, nothing. We got done with Warp Tour. We split a bus with every time I die, and you know the day rate for a bus is a thousand dollars. So half of that over six weeks, she yeah. adds up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's a serious number. Plus the but gas. I, but, like, again, you got to run the generator all yeah. day. But I, I couldn't have done war, something like Warp Tour in a van. Never. No way. Kubla Khan. Yeah, we Sickos. we. We got a mini hard lore with them coming up. They did all of Warp Tour in a van. That would have broken me. And did merch. They did their own merch? Like, they had a guy with them, but Matt broken. was often... I remember... Broken up. Lo- I remember... You know how you had to, like, you, you set up... The, you load the stage, you know, every morning? Yeah. I remember doing that and seeing them... Because dri- the vans can't park by the buses. No. So they're way the fuck away... I remember like watching this dot get bigger and bigger as they're just dragging their merch and their tent to wherever they're going to set up. That, brutal. After Every story, fucking morning. I could After the story you just heard about me almost dying, like that didn't break us up. But if yeah. I had to do warp tour in a van, we would have. That would have been it? God, fuck. No way. 
no way. Warp Tour is already enough of a living hell that you you have to give yourself something. You can't yeah. you can't just do it. And and we did we did it we we did it with a bunch of bands that did it. Emure did it in a van. Fit for a King did it in a van. Like these are bands that you figure would get a bus, but like no. Yeah, yeah Emure did it, and that's yeah. very surprising. It was crazy. But Warp Tour is the kind of the time financially where you're like, okay, well, this makes sense to do well, too. Like, yeah, it's like two months. Yeah. And it's so. all outside. You have nowhere to go. There's no green yeah. room. There's no that, showers. You need a spot, a place. That, that I just needed, I needed even a place to put my things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was just like, I have my bunk. It's there. Oh, <laughs> so brutal. Yeah. Now, it's so going to rain. Tour. Yeah, and yeah. it's going to rain. And then you're just... Dude, one day, one day, somewhere in Texas, there was like a, a like a several hour rain delay, and I just I was like, I'm hungry, what what should I do? And I remembered I had a fucking Olive Garden gift card. Fuck. I just took myself to Olive Garden for like hours of. And you journey. remember it to this day. So that I was do. one of the greatest it was meals. Of your so life. pleasant. Also, yeah. though, <laughs> that was when I opened up a porta potty, and saw, shit. Above the rim, oh, like yeah. stacked above the rim. So yeah. somebody, yes, kept shitting after. It's a bad time. Like, well, I still gotta go. Yep, that's the toilet at the Emerson Theater. Oh, the Emerson. Colin, you ever play the Emerson Theater? Where's the Emerson? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. No, I don't. Th- Wait, it's just Maybe, a big. Did room we do it on the like Hebrew thing? Slanted. Cause you know, I don't, I don't know if we did it, it would have been on the Haper thing with the case restraints. So I don't Us? know. No, no, no. We didn't play the Emerson there. Okay. We played some other venue in Indianapolis, but like the Emerson we've played over a dozen times. It's always, it was always on the routing and anybody from Indianapolis knows exactly what I'm talking about. When I say it's the worst venue in America, like there's not, I there's just nothing said behind. that in an interview once with someone, someone was like, what's the worst place I was like, I will tell you the worst venue in America is the Emerson Theater. And I'm not even, I didn't even take into account that Jerry's Pizza existed. But like the Emerson Theater is the worst venue in America, said it in an interview. And the the venue took that, quoted it and put it on that. they that, That's how they started marketing the venue. The worst oh, venue wow. in America. That's kind of a great spin, though. But they legit and everybody in Indianapolis knows this when I say the toilet had a mountain of shit. Yeah, always piled up. And I thought, I thought I made that up in my own brain because I was like, oh, I'm exaggerating. That's crazy. But I'm like, did the mountain of shit toilet actually happen? They're like, oh yeah, that's still there. Still there. <laughs> still there. Same poop. Yeah. It's gotta be. Or There's people just no, keep adding to it. It's like a legend. Wow. There's no room for like anything. Nope. Slanted, they did. They built like a toilet. little, yeah. They built like a little um, lofted green room above the entrance. Now That's though. the so last there time we played something. there. Yeah. Last time I played there was like 2016 with Knock Loose and still bad. <laughs> and still the area and, and and then the area too. There's like nothing around. It's, it's a it's, it's a like brutal. no cute restaurant. There, no, no, there's a little Caesars. <laughs> yeah. There's a McDonald's <laughs> if you want to get stabbed. Um uh, there's a <laughs> worth it. There's a there used to be a, a like a head shop next door, and the guy was called Dr. Feel Good. Yeah. Right. And we went in there the first time we were played there. We went to Doctor Feelgood. Dude was asleep on the floor. He was asleep, <laughs> and we were looking around. And he sells porn and he sells meth pipes. And he was like, "Holy fucking shit! What the fuck are you guys doing here? Like, you're open. Like, you're, you're still, on we're the in floor. your store." So then he just like regaled us with tales from his youth and told us all about how he was in this music video. And yeah, I fucking sorry, man. Sometimes I fall asleep here. I woke up one morning. I, you know, I fall asleep on the floor here. I woke up one day and some chick was just fucking my cock. And I was like, well, that doesn't uh-huh. happen. But doctor, he said, don't call me Dr. <laughs> feel good. Call me Dr. Dirt nap. Cause I sleep all the time. And I was like, all right. So the last time <laughs> we played the Anderson theater in 2016 with knock loose, uh, Dr. Dirt naps was gone. He, oh. he vacated the area. So there wow. was a, they opened a convenience store and said, I was like, this is way better because they sell candy and they sell soda. And I don't have to walk to Little Caesars. Yeah. So at the end of the show, I was going to go in to the, the convenience store and get some candy for the road. And I went in the wrong door, which I thought was the door to the convenience store. But it was a door to like some weird dark wave sex club. Oh. And there was just people in the club 
just going. Oh, fuck yeah. And it was like loud, super loud. Like, remember we hackers when they go to that club? Or, yeah, it sounded like that. But they were all just fucked up. And they, as soon as I opened the door, they went. I was like, oh my holy God. shit. <laughs> was Dr. Dre Naps there? I, I found that. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was, he's the DJ. I, he probably haunts the place. But um, <laughs> so that was, I have many experiences with the Emerson Theater. Uh, we played there once on Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Arms we, we, away we, in a case yeah, yeah. And I hated that venue so much. Like I still like, we've never played a bad show there. That's the problem is like, yeah. I dislike the venue, but every show is good. Okay. Except yeah, for what can you do, you know? Exactly. Well, what you do is you say, well, it's Halloween. Let's throw candy in the crowd and toilet paper the entire venue. So that's uh, what we did. And this, I, I felt bad for the staff because the staff were just like hardcore kids. Like they uh, were innocent bystanders, but like we were throwing Tootsie Rolls and then toilet paper the venue. And they were like, had to scrape up, stepped on Tootsie Rolls off the floor. And yeah, I, yeah. But, you know, we, that's what we suffer for art, you know? Yeah. <laughs> They're so shout out to Emerson Theater for being still the worst venue in the country. Worst venue in America. Now, yeah. something I'd like to talk to you about, Vincent, mm-hmm. is another genre that you created, and that is ketogenic hardcore. Okay. Did I do that? You were the the first person I ever talked to about not eating carbs. Okay. Because you, you had a pretty substantial weight loss. Yeah. You got very fit around that work. I'm getting it back. Well, no, I can see it in your face that that's just not true. I can see it in yeah. my face coming back. But uh, I will take credit for that. You if should. You want, if you yeah, want to give it to me, like uh, it was people were people were surprised. Yeah, at, at yeah you gym. dropped. Because I, I went incognito for a while. Like I was like off because um, we did. I was I didn't want to be in a band anymore. Like I was just depressed. I was fucked. I was over it. I was over everything. And I was just trying to figure out like what I was going to do with myself. And I was sad. I was in a bad mood all the time. And I, I realized like, I was like, fuck, what is my problem? Like, why, when did I get it to this? Like, when did it all come to this? Cause I wasn't always a fat person. Uh, you get fat. Like some people are born fat, but I got fat. Um, and I was seeing pictures of, you know, uh, of me at shows and I was just like, Ugh, that's yeah. not, me so i figured i had to do something and um i went to a nutritionist and i i they gave me a plan i stuck to it and the 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 thing that really it's not i don't think it's discipline it's i'm giving this person money yeah a week Ah. until i'm done so like that's what motivated me he's like i don't want to keep giving this person money like i want to I, not, not only did I want to not keep giving this person money, but I wanted to prove to this person that I could do what they're asking of me. Mm. Um, so I did it. And it was, it was crazy. Um, when, cause when you you're in your own body, you don't feel it. You don't see it. You don't, you don't know um, until people start telling you like, the fuck. Yeah. Like I was, I, I worked at a venue around here for a while. Um, and I was doing it as I was working. So I was like working shows for friends, you know, friends, bands would come through and I would work the shows. Like every time I die, uh, played this venue and I was loading them in and Keith didn't recognize me. Like Keith, I straight up said hi to Keith who we've toured with a thousand times in multiple different countries, said hi to him. And he just walked by me and I was like, fucking is he mad at me? And then he like took, five or six steps turned around and said, dude, I didn't even recognize you. Wow. And that's like, holy shit. So I'm not a promoter of keto. Like I don't promote yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't, yeah. I don't want to tell people what to do or how to do it. Um, but I am a promoter of like, if you want to feel better about yourself, see what you can do, make a change in your diet one way or the other and, and try and just like see if it works. He doesn't work for everybody. Um, I'm surprised it worked for me. So like, not only that, but like my mood changed. I was happier now. Mm. Um, my stage presence was better. Mm-hmm. I felt mm-hmm. better on stage. And Warp Tour was like the first tour I think we did. Warp Tour 2017 was like the first tour we did after 
I completely hit my goal. And I was like, it, it felt like night and day. I was, it was crazy. Cause I was like running around, it was a hundred degrees out and I felt bad, but I didn't feel the same kind of bad that I did before. Of course. Um, and it, it yeah, just, I, re- felt- I texted you and I was like, what have you done? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, how are you doing this? And you sent me just like a little chart. Yeah. You know, and I didn't the know foods anything that about you it. can eat. And that's it. Yeah. And I've, and I, I, I same thing stuck to it. Yeah. And it was 2018 was when I got really fit. Yeah. Same it's here, fun. boys. So yep. good. I remember yeah. on the tour, the hate breed tour that we did, you were posting pictures and just keto. That was your, yeah. that was it. Like it was me jumping for the first time in three years. So yeah. I'd just be like, eh, this is keto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the dom- I honestly didn't even realize that the domino effect was you yeah. doing it first. Yeah. So you did it, Bo did it, Taylor did it. Taylor would like killed it for a while. Yep. And that was when I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta try something. And yeah. dude, it's crazy how fast you start seeing it. First Fuck. week I did it, I lost six pounds. Dude, yes, yeah, absolutely. I, was, I mean, the blow, the water weight, all that shit crazy. is like real. It's real. It's the not only, cliche. The only and problem, like you, yep, go ahead is now that I'm now I'm like, I got to get back on keto. And I, never, I know I never, and do I it. never it's fucking so do. Hard. It's always yeah. like, there's always some like date where it's like, well, I know I'm going to, I'm going to be out of town and I'm going to eat whatever. Right. But then when I get back, I'm just, yeah. I'm going to cook every day. And yeah, no. And it was really, so I was two around two sixty when I started it. Wow. Zero muscle, you know, just straight yeah. up like a soft two sixty, And, and you got, got scary skinny. I did. I oh, I went into full disordered eating. I'm pretty sure. sure everybody hits that, and you get uh you get body dysmorphia for sure. Yeah, uh, for yeah. Sure. I'm I'm still like that's I'm every day I deal with that at this point. But Same. like, you but look then great. you see, hey, thanks. you look so awesome. You. So every you. pizza every pizza Friday, I'm like, damn, Colin looks awesome. <laughs> I got. I need to lay off the pizza for a while. I'll tell, you, I'll, oh, I'll I meant to tell that. you. You know, it's National Pizza Month. Fuck. All right, <laughs> clocking in. <laughs> um, yeah, it was two sixty when, and uh, so we recorded the the nudie mag demo, which is like just kind of like Weezer's thing that mm-hmm. Alec and Shannon and I did. Uh, and I ate like six chili dogs after we did it. You were and sucking out a chili dog. <laughs> it was literally the I I ate five and then I finished Shannon's, and I was sitting there like I should probably do something about this. <laughs> <laughs> and and the next day I was keto. And a week later, I lost ten pounds. Yeah, a week crazy. later, I lost another ten. Do you remember? Do you remember the first time you ate carbs after, and how guilty oh. you felt? Oh, it was yeah. horrible, dude. Yeah. I felt like I got hit by a truck. I felt I like fell I, fell over. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. I it was Thanksgiving. Yeah, and and I was I was home with my ex girlfriend. I cooked everything and made all the fixins, mm-hmm. and we ate. And just passed out on the couch. And then, yeah. then even the next day, I was like, whoa. Like, I felt dumb. Yeah. To I this went, day, I will not drink a calorie. No, never. Won't do it. No. I'm straight. Don't drink a sugary drink ever. Diet. So diet I, I, I broke keto at my friend John Torn's birthday party with pizza. And I couldn't drive home. Like, I had to, I had to have somebody else drive me home. Couldn't do it. It's a real thing. Yeah. So let's let's compare. I was I was about two ten, mm-hmm. and I went. I was sub one eighty by the end. Okay, Vincent. I was uh two seventy five two eighty. Um, I got as low as one eighty seven, which is absolutely uh, unhealthy. A hundred uh, pounds. One eighty seven. Yeah, that was as so, low as I got. Like, yeah, but I, th- that's. Yeah, it was. It, yeah, it was crazy. It was. Um, you're a fair deal taller than me, right? Yeah, I'm you're. Six, yeah, I'm, I'm six four. Yeah. I'm, oh, you're six four. Yeah, he's a big boy. I knew you were tall. I didn't know you were that tall. I'm six. quite a bit shorter than both of you. So right. I'm six one. I was two sixty. One sixty five. Holy yeah. fuck! You guys really lost. Nar- like yeah. every day, I lo- I would weigh myself and be like, "All right, lost another two. I w- I weighed Just once obsessing. a week. Obsessing. Once yeah. a week is once good. a week, same exact time, same exact clothes, same exact everything. Um, and I'm still like my brain. I'm at I'm around 220 right now because mm-hmm. I, I work out and me too, yeah, like that. But like uh, my brain sees that number and they, it goes, "Do you got fucking? Do you got to stop?" Same. But because 
I'll eat cereal for breakfast. And, uh, and it's just like pig. Exactly. And I don't eat what I used to eat though. That's the, that's the most important thing I was thinking about, like what I used to get at, you know, talk about, or what I used to get at certain places. And I'm just like, it's fuck, I used to eat an entire DiGiorno pizza by myself. Yeah. That is 2000 calories. Yeah. Uh, but it's that, not, that's where I'm not, at now again. It's not delivery though. You know, it's not um, so we've arrived finally where we always knew we were going to end up. Yeah. Yeah. Is this, was that the segue? I want to know. I want to sure. know what you used to eat that was bad. I want to know your go tos on the road d- doing keto, oh, because that's a first on the okay. show. Yeah. And what are you eating now? I want. I want all throw out the trilogy. The board? Colin's sucking down six chili dogs. Six chili dogs at my worst. Uh, <laughs> no, no problem. Entire yeah. DiGiorno pizza, easy. Bag of chips and a pint of ice cream, easy. Oh, now the ice cream. That's where. That's where it comes from. I also used to crush a 12 pack of Mountain Dew like a day. I've been there. Woo. Um, Just we're thirsty. You know, that's the thing. It's not that it's water sucks. Can I say that? Water sucks. Water. It's just like you have to do it. You know, now I'm drinking. I drink like a gallon of water a day. So much. But at the same time, it sucks every single time. Um, I love I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a water boy. I love the piss, but I hate water. Real into Gatorade liquid IV lately. Oh, yeah. And Huge. dude, Colin, I, I took 40 packets from TwitchCon because they just had them there because everybody gets really the, ripped at all that's the bars. That's like $65. That's the, I know, one thing I that we, that's the one thing we splurge on is liquid IV. We buy that for for us. Like we use band money and we buy liquid IV for us on tour because it's a really good idea. Gotta getting sick it. on the road is the worst. I there drink is. it every day now, and I'm I like at, by nine a.m. I'm like I'm hydrated. I'm good. hydrated. Yeah, feels really good. All right, so then you switch to keto. Keto. What, what are, when you're on the road, try okay. to remember back, because there's a thing with keto too that I think philosophically, I think if you're if you're eating just like meat and vegetables, yeah, you're you're good. But when you start to get into the like. When you start to get into the like, oh, I'm gonna make a keto cheesecake. Yeah, that shit's fucked up. That's it, fucked it up. It throws you off. Yeah, it throws you off. It makes you. It gives you the craving. I totally think that. I uh, I do on tour. I would do egg McMuffins, sub egg, the extra egg, and then I would throw the muffin. I'd ask for no muffin because I don't want to waste the food. Yeah. But every they would not understand that me. So they would just, yeah, yeah. I was just sort of like, so I get two of those. That's my breakfast. Um, Beautiful. lunch. Oh. You Sounds can find so a good right now. you can find a salad place or a burger place that does like lettuce wrap. Like uh, Shake Shack does lettuce wrap. In and Out Burger does lettuce wrap. Uh, yeah. A lot of places do it now. McDonald's, dude, the Big Mac salad. Okay. Oh. If you ask for a Big Mac with no bun, they'll put it in a little plastic tray I like that. Yeah. But when I and was doing it, like keto. when I did keto, it was not like a huge thing. People no, are like, oh, yeah, you're doing, yeah. uh, you're doing uh, Atkins. Atkins. Like, no, I'm not yeah. doing Atkins. I'm doing keto. And they didn't know what the fuck that was. So back yeah. then it was like a little harder. Um, or I'll do like a set. I'll do a salad. I'll do, you know, bunless, whatever. Um, yeah. And then gas station stops. I would just get a brick of cheese, like straight up straight brick up. of cheese, stick of pepperoni. Yeah, and I'm good. Um, <laughs> gas stations sell cheese in the full brick and it's really mm-hmm. helpful. Pork rinds. Um, Pork rinds are good. Yeah, yeah. Pork rinds were huge. I grew to love pork rinds. They were weird Dude. at first. Hey. And now Dipping I pork rinds in like a like a cheese sauce or something. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. I've I've bred it. I've made there's a company out of Illinois called Pork P O Umlaut R Q. <coughs> yeah. And you, they made, you turn me on to those bread Yeah. Crumbs. Yeah, exactly. They make pork rind breadcrumbs that so, you could make oh, yourself. Yeah, with no, like I, yeah, I'm a pork king good guy myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I made keto chicken, like breaded chicken. All the yeah, time. I did the same thing. Fucking amazing. It's good. Um, um, And so now what are you eating now that you've come out of the eye of the keto store? So I don't eat breakfast anymore for the most part. Like yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do like a, I guess intermittent fasting is the official name for it where I, yeah, start at noon and end around six mm. uh, or I don't, I only have a six hour window where I actually eat, but I just eat normal. Like uh, lunch will be like, I'll go get a sandwich somewhere or I'll make a sandwich here. Um, 
chili. I, it's it's not like nothing crazy. Like I don't go out a lot anymore. On yeah. tour, on tour, it's it's terrible. But every once in a while, my girlfriend and I will be like, let's go to Taco Bell and we'll get Taco Bell. So I don't oh, feel yeah. guilty. Or I'm still adhering to something. Yeah. But I don't feel guilty where I, I work out at nine o'clock in the morning. So I'm fasted burning mm-hmm. then. And when I eat, when I finally eat at 12, I feel okay. And I don't feel like shit before I go to sleep. And that was my problem on the, on the road a lot is that, and my band is, it's so hard to be in this band. Cause they're so and naughty not, and not eat, eat after a show where uh... we would stop at the first gas station. We'd go to, you know, pilot flying J uh, Wawa sheets, if it was available, Bucky's, whatever the fuck. And everyone would just go in and I would force myself to go to sleep before we would get to that point. Smart. Um, and I think I just eat, I don't know. I think I eat kind of normal. Like I, I eat poorly sometimes, but it's not as much bad food as I was eating. Like I don't eat an entire pizza. I eat half a pizza. It's not. Well, cause the other thing too, is you're one of the first people who I've seen and who we've toured with, like bring a yoga mat and a kettlebell. Yeah. You know, like hey, you were a kettlebell guy, J- James, like th- they'll bring dumbbells and stuff, but like you're you, every day you would go and set up and do your, your shit, you know, easy train. And, they're easy to take. Like, it's like an easy yeah. transport. I keep it in the back of the van with my stuff and it's just there. Yeah. And, and, and the important thing to me is a set schedule. Like being on the road is perfect because I will load in is at a certain time every day and we have to load in and I'll help. Like I'll help load in. That's my, you know, uh, my pre workout warm up, and then I'll mm-hmm. work out and I'll be done and I can go for a walk and I can do whatever I want. Cause I don't do sound check or anything. Like I just do my own thing. Yeah. Um, and it's easy for me to, to work out like that because I have a set schedule every day when I'm home. It's routine. a little harder. Yeah. I love a routine. It's nice. And I think, <laughs> I think the, being quarantined, like gave everyone like a, I have to do this at this time of day or else I'm going to fucking die. Like kind of, or they, up. or, and if, and you can kind of tell whoever didn't adopt that, you know? Right. Yeah. Oh, so I'm trying to, still trying to here. I woke up at 1230 today. Today? today. Yeah. No, oh, dude. What time is your, sh- what time does your shift start? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. <laughs> He's an animal, this guy. I can't, dude. All the work. Seven thirty every day. I'm a six thirty man, so yeah. Yeah, Colin, you're always up so I'm fucking up. early. I know. It's, it's crazy though because I'll text our manager at eight o'clock in the morning, and he it lives in California, and he'll be up. Oh, damn. So you have kids. For them. You're just awake. Oh, kids and I, dogs. Yeah, I'm, I got ch- chili is my alarm clock, bro. Hmm. He rips I'll, the I'll blanket go, off, and then I'll go to sleep till ten. I got an automatic Damn, uh, awesome. feeder. These cats are fine. <laughs> My cat is a piece of shit. She would wake me up if she could, but the door's closed because of fires or whatever. There's something about closing the door and fires. You read that? What? Some kind of thing. There's this video of this you house. You don't close like your door. Your house going to com- completely lie. burned down mm. except for this one bedroom because the door was closed. Really? Yeah, it's like a thing. Like sleep with your doors closed. Huh. My cats would drive me insane if I did that. Yeah, I did mine something. Does. I, I did something sad today that I think you'll both appreciate. As you know, people who I assume like being cold, I had to turn on the heat. Wow. Yeah, you 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 an AC man, Vincent? Me? I bet you are. <laughs> oh, baby! I just got so I I bought this house two years ago, knowing there's no central air. I was <sighs> like doomed, you know. Um. I did one year of window units Mm -hmm. and no, never again for the rest of my life. Like this is my basement. I'm in my basement right now. We, we have band practice right over there. Yeah. So like this is a basement. There is a door that leads outside and that's it. There's no windows. That's the ventilation. There's no ventilation. So the first time we had band practice down here, it was soaked. Like it was soaking wet. I was like, what am I going to do? I bought a bunch of dehumidifiers and it made it even hotter. Mm. one year later i was like i gotta do something and hvac is i might as well just buy a new house um mm-hmm. so i've did mini splits and lifesaver two mini splits, one, mini upstairs, split? one downstairs yeah what's it's, that 
it's those European things that you see, like you know, when you tour Europe and they have the thing that's up on the wall and it's got the thing that goes. Oh, like, the, like what Taylor's oh, got in the pit. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have two of those in my house, and the guy who installed them is like a friend of a friend, and he was like, "Yeah, these are industrial, so your house will be fine." And they work well; they're awesome. Fuck, he was yeah. right. Yeah, and I have solar, so like, oh, the sun sweet. is cooling my house. Come on, yeah, incredible. It's the best. What a guy that sun. Yep. Fuck and yeah, they generally they pump out heat too, which I'm not going to use until probably December. But you be using that. Yeah. When you have to here. I'm on the first floor here too, and there's a basement beneath me that's all concrete. So my apartment stays really cold, but like today, mid October, like, yeah. and I'm sick. I don't want to be walking temp? around. I mean, Echo, what's the temperature right now? Right now, it's 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my God. Have a good You better evening. fucking send me that audio, goddammit. I'll send you Don't you echo. forget the fucking Echo. What is Colin? Aurelion Colin echo. is 36. Yeah. What is Colin? God damn it. Son of a bitch. Aurelion Colin is Echo. 36 years Just shut up. Shut up. <laughs> ruined me. I fucking ruined your bit, dude. That's you killed my bit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but you better fucking send me that on. Don't I'll send to you put the, put audio. That in the damn folder, you son of a bitch. What do you got coming up, Vincent? New new album? New album coming soon. Um, no, no idea how soon, but mm-hmm. uh got mixes two days ago. Oh. Oh, Mazel Tov. That's a yeah. good, oh, it's like that. Good feeling. We got uh, we got mixes, got second mixes, some even third mixes. Holy moly! And I'll tell you, like, I got these mixes when I was driving in my car, and mm-hmm. I cried. Wow. First time, really? Yeah, uh, first time my band has ever brought my, me to tears. Like I, I was listening to this and I couldn't, I couldn't hold it in. Like I was wow. actually, I wept. Um, but it was, a, I'd say it was a pretty, you know, this is the first album that I actually had a, a hand in, in writing musically good amount of songs. What's up? Musically. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, That's I, was, I mean, this far into your band's career, like, you know what you want your band to sound like. Yeah. I usually so, don't help. What, was the emotional <laughs> response that you had like a sense of like, we did it and like relief or was it like, this sounds so good. It, I can't believe a, it. Or like, a, I think it's a combination of a lot of things like, um, we went in the studio with basically no material. Like we went in Ooh. cold and wow. I was like, this is fucked. Like I was so stressed out. Like we had no music and that's the first time it's ever happened. And we, we did a lot of, a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. And so that was a relief because I was stressed up until that point. And then I was stressed about doing vocals and I was stressed about, you know, how everything was actually going to come out. And recording sucks. Like, yeah, I hate it. Um, I don't, I don't like doing it at all. My lyrical content. I'm always worried about that as well. So like, it's, it was a, it was a whole mess of things kind of jumbled up in the ones in the one, in one um, big ball. And when I finally got to hear it all laid out and I, I just had a physical uh, response I guess wow. um, the songs are good, I think. And <laughs> I don't know. We we got a, a group of guest vocalists on this one that are, I think, pretty, you know, they span the the gamut. Sure. And um, I'm really excited about it. So that's what we got coming up next. Uh, we got really a new cool. record. Very new cool. record. Here, we got here. some tours that we can't talk about because that's how yeah. things work. And I can't even tell you anything about the record except that it made me cry. That's, I mean, enough said. What right? else do you we, need? Yeah. You know, we didn't even talk about the tour that we actually did do together, which oh, was yeah. like kind of the sickest. I couldn't believe it. Ever. Couldn't believe it. Twitching Tongues, Cases Train, Crowbar, Haybreed. Haybreed Satisfaction Tour. Yeah. Yeah. Like the one. With Sean playing a bunch of songs. Yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah. That was the awesome. Thing ever. When, when I went, Colin, you couldn't talk because your voice was shut. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, that happens to me every time. Uh, that, you know, I feel. Was that that was the keto tour or was that no a year later was the keto tour? Yeah. I feel like. Um, so that, that you wow. got me right before I was like a miserable fuck on that one. Mm. So I don't even know if I was like cool or friendly or anything. You were was miserable that, because your voice was all shot every day. And, and that's the another thing that I've noticed. And you'll probably notice, too, is that it doesn't do that anymore. 
really? like when you're when when you're like healthier and you're doing like better stuff with your body, like your voice is better. Hmm. I mean, maybe, it's maybe I'll find out one day. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. It's only anyway. a, that's up to you. It's up to me. But yeah, that was that tour was awesome. That was that's so the, sick. That's the tour where we made the hate breed ripoff shirt that said Vincent sang for hate breed once. I remember that. That was on Warp Tour, right? Yeah, I got to sing uh, Hate Breed songs. <laughs> <laughs> hate you breed. also, something I just remembered was the shirt you made after the bus crashes. Yeah, the Beavis Beavis and one. Yeah, that was because we basically had to throw all of our merch away yeah. that we had already paid for and or had to pay for. And then I owed, you know, Nate money mm-hmm. for the van. So we were like, how the fuck are we going to do this? And luckily, people really liked the shirt. Did so. they step up? Yeah. Yeah. It, everything got covered, which is good because yeah, that's I would, huge. I, can, I that amount of debt, it was the numbers are I can't even I don't even Crippling. remember what they were, but they were dumb. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Well, we all made it, you know, we did. Yeah. We're definitely, all here. Definitely been there. And I, I've said this before, but there's a sense of like when you um, suffer some kind of financial blow in the music world and yeah. like in our world. And then like the community is what brings Saves you back you. into the, into the black, you know, it's like, it, Damn, maybe it, this shit is real. Yeah. Maybe, know? maybe like yeah. people actually do give a shit. Oh wow. You know, it's, it's a good, it's like a double, um, an additional silver lining to the whole thing. It's just like, Oh, huh. Not to backhand that, but there were people who were like, I bought your shirt, so you owe me oh. this song. Yeah, fuck them. You better play the song live. I bought your shirt. And it's like, and there was also people who were like, what do you mean you canceled the fucking tour? It's like, All right. See you never, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the, the, I mean, the irony of the van flip stuff is not lost on you, I'm sure. Right now, it was written in the stars. Written in the stars. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Well, may <sighs> we may none of us ever do that again. I know. Flip flip fans. May we all spend some more time together, maybe in a van, at, at some point. Whoa, oh, Bo dude, flip. No. This was this is Vincent in the van. Oh, how could you do this to him? <laughs> that was me. See what I'm saying? I'm stuck. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for making me relive that trauma. Time. I just, yeah. you know, I was like, it's been an hour. Um, I should do a bit. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I gotta go pick up medication. Vincent's yeah, got a stream. Colin's got a. Oh, eat it's something. stream time. Surely it is. Well, awesome. Thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Lovely I hope, chat. I hope just, I, I hope I fulfill all the hard lore needs. I, I. I believe you have. I think you did. And you know, if, if 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 you didn't to the people, this is just. This we'll is, do it again. This yeah. is the hottest. This is the hottest thing going right now. Oh come on, man! Hey. All the all the kids, all the hey. kids love it. And I say, I use the word kids in like a, I'm a the royal. The pe- right yeah. the people. Yeah. And the, the hardcore. We stuff. got done with the the mini one at at Furnace Fest, and Colin and I were immediately we were like, we got to have him. Got to have so, him. Like, you know, like I so, said, so, I don't I don't do podcasts. But hey, I'll do this hard, one anytime. We got a hard lore exclusive yeah. for life. Don't ask me to do well, your podcast either if you're watching and have a podcast. I don't want to do that's it. That's right. You hear that scoped exposure? Don't email him. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks Thank for you all me. for watching. Vincent Bennett. In case can you do can you do us one favor? What's up? Can you say it's hard lore time? Absolutely. It's hard lore time. Wow, that was a good one. Gorgeous. Thank you so Amazing. much. Thank you, sir. Is that uh, what do we got? What are you drinking? Uh, that's a Waterloo spiced apple seltzer. Yum. That sounds oh, flavors. fantastic. Sounds yummy. Oh, it's nice. Oh, we didn't even talk about polar. We got time. <laughs> we I mean, we're still rolling. Love polar polar. seltzer—they they were the first ones to like really ride for that. Yeah. And uh, you got it. You got a Dorseman or what? A little Dorsey. Uh, I used to know someone that worked there, mm. 
and they close to, they used to just <laughs> bombard us with free product it was wow, nice good for you man the, well, the we're holiday flavors too. are so awesome yeah there's like mold apple cider mm. um this year's pretty crazy they have like a pomegranate sangria or something champagne i don't know i'm excited I'm always excited. They used to send me a gift box, you know, and I don't get that anymore. But wow, maybe after this new album, after the sh- yeah, after- maybe and after, after this hard episode, yeah, after this episode, yeah. All right, everybody. Good night and good bye. bye.